Hey everyone and welcome to Hashtag the World of Cool Features. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can automate focus stacking as a technique on your Android phone to take much better product photos. Not that it's limited to product photos, the method that I'm about to show you. Of course, you can expand it to macro photography, um, landscape and however large your creative canvas is. It's like in this series, I show you how to drive a manual so automatics become easy for you automatically. Focus stacking is kind of like an industry secret. All pros use it to get tack sharp product photos. The theory is you take a bunch of photos of the exact same subject but with different focal points uh, spread across your image frame and then you intelligently blend them using software to get a much wider focal plane than possible on smartphones. But why did I mention smartphones specifically? Smartphones have fixed apertures, so you can't manipulate aperture to control the depth of fields. So you can't get deeper depth of focus, which is the opposite of a shallower depth of focus. This actually is a more profound issue when shooting macro, but if I show you an example, sticking to the product photography theme, of course, I place my product, then I place the packaging, some other random stuff to fill the background and please do not comment on the lighting or the arrangement. I'm just going for speed here, you know, in the demonstration. And now when you critical focus on the product, you'll notice the packaging goes out of sharp focus. You can push the product, pull the packaging, but the point is focus stacking will let you keep your creative perspectives and intended framing. So let's begin. Head to the Play Store on your Android phone, download an app called Open Camera. It's a free app, costs nothing and is a revelation for anyone wanting to get more out of their Android camera. The Playso link is also there in the description of the video. Please install it. And then, you know, let me help you with some basic settings. Hit the preferences gear icon and start by setting the timer to something like three seconds. So this gives your phone enough time to become stable after your tapping the shutter button has introduced micro jitters. Uh, see, when you focus stack, your phone and subject should ideally stay unmoved. Software can take care of tiny amounts of, you know, tails and pans, but drastic movements can create weird artifacts. So, use a tripod system. Uh, go back to the main menu and come to photo settings. Now, uh, listen very carefully. There are two workflows possible from, you know, here on. So one is an all phone workflow where your uh, phone, uh, it clicks the photo and then you use an online tool which is accessible from your phone itself, internet, to create the blended output. So everything can be done on this singular device only. If that's what you want, make sure you set your image format to PNG or JPG. I use PNGs for better image quality. But if you want to do the blending and editing on a laptop, which means you want, uh, you know, more control, more flexibility and uh, file sizes don't matter to you, go to the raw tab and select either standard or DNG or DNG raw only. Laptop users can leverage the wider capabilities of editing raw DNGs in their uh, image manipulation software of choice, uh, you know, within that workflow. I will actually show both methods, but uh, I just hope the differentiation between the two is clear in the beginning itself. So what I'll do is I'll set my capture to standard and DNG RAW. I'll use the uh, PNG duplicates to show the mobile only capture and use the RAW on my laptop to show the laptop workflow. RAW people should also allow RAW for focus bracketing and in both cases, mobile and uh, laptop, please check the camera resolution that it is set to the highest that your device offers. Also set image quality to 100% as well. Now let's come back to the main screen. Remember, Open Camera is a brilliant app. It is rich in features, but let's just keep this video short. So I'm not going to distract the flow by talking about other features. After making sure you're in the photo capture mode, tap on these three vertical dots to access the shoot menu. In the photo sub menu, select focus bracketing. That's focus written with two curly brackets. So when you tap it, you'll see two sliders appear on the GUI. Uh, we'll get to those in a moment, but tap the shoot settings again. Scroll down to the number of photos part and let me explain the theory behind it. So this is an automation app. Imagine looking at your setup top down. So what you want is everything from point A to point B to be in sharp focus. What you set in the number of photos options here is the number of divisions that this app will then divide your focal plane into and then it will automatically move focus through these planes and capture images one after the other. 
on one hand, if you just crank it to 200, theoretically, you should be at least able to pinch balloon with the end photo, but practically. And jokes apart, for physically smaller focal planes, numbers like 5 or 10 should be enough. Remember, the more photos you shoot, the more space you spend. I've only gone up to 100 and that to once to take a par focal landscape photo. Hey, if that term intrigues and interests you, stay with me. That could be my next feature. Now let's keep this to 10 for now. And enable infinite distance as a hygiene feature. You may not need it for tabletop products or you know macro photography. You have the entire control for it as it is when you're capturing. So just enable it, I mean, hygiene. I'm not going to worry about white balance, scenes and color effects for now, but clicking on the EV icon on top will throw manual exposure controls on the screen. Like I said, phones have fixed aperture, so all you get is ISO and shutter speed. And now we'll talk about these two sliders. So think of the bracketing source slider as the background limit and think of the target slider as the foreground limit. When you slide either of them, the GUI updates in real time to show you where your focus is. So now your job is to use these two sliders to draw two limits. Basically draw two imaginary walls of focus, making sure that your intended subject is between these two walls. Got it. Once done, click on the shutter button and the app will automatically divide your focal plane into as many photos as you selected, 10 in our case for now, and basically click these photos with the focus automatically moving between your selected foreground and background. In fact, we can actually see that happening. And in fact, if you check the images taken, you'll see the first one has a selected foreground in focus and the last one has a selected background in focus. I hope you understood what's happened here. Like I said, professionals use this technique a ton, but they're doing it manually on their DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. And if I'm not wrong, Olympus is the only brand that has a couple of cameras that offer this feature in a professional body. Otherwise, you're either, you know, using touch to focus to create those focal planes or on manual lenses you're turning the focus ring bit by bit on a smartphone however open camera automates this um, thereby also reducing chances of error and providing greater control and granularity Now it's time to actually stack these images onto a finished product. I'll start with the phone people. Open your web browser, type focusstackingonline.com. The link is also in the description down below. Once the page loads, tap on add, use the gallery or file manager on your phone to browse to the images taken, select them all. Keep the alignment method to standard for first trial, tap on stack. Um, give it a couple of seconds and ta-da! It'll create a focus tagged image that you can download directly on your phone and if you check, our subject is in focus through and through. Anything we selected with our focus sliders is in focus. Last I checked, focus stacking online doesn't work natively with DNGs, which means you would have had to, you know, convert them first into JPEGs or PNGs and that's why I asked you, you know, not to shoot raw DNGs. Now let's talk about the laptop workflow. Honestly, I use Luminar Neo. It's really simple to use, but highly complicated AI-powered image manipulator. Uh, unlike Photoshop, you can actually get a buy once and keep using forever version. All you need is Luminar Neo, the software, and the Focus Stacky extension plugin. Then you just add your photos to the catalog, drag them into the plugin window. Uh, also check that auto alignment is on. I mean, this will counter any misalignment that may have happened because of shakes, etc. While this is a great patch through, it's not magic, you know, it has its limitations. Uh, filmmaking grand tip, by the way, uh, make sure. The more you pay attention during acquisition, the more sleepful nights you can spend during post production. You can also get the app to remove chromatic aberrations in your photos and then just tap on stack. It does its thingy and then spits out a focus stack image. The benefit of using Luminar Neo is that uh, not only do you hardly need five, six clicks to get the job done, Luminar Neo, by the way, is an amazing AI powered image editing software.
it's not like I don't pay monthly for Photoshop or Lightroom. I do, but I'm a video guy. My photo needs are fairly basic, and Lumina super simple workflow that consists of uh, clearly demarcated effects and simple sliders to control them. It's super easy and time saving because all the heavy lifting is done by Lumina's own AI engine in the background. If you want to use or buy Luminar Neo, I'll put in referral codes in the description since I use the full version, I can get discount codes that I can share. And so we come to the end of another feature. I hope I was able to teach you how to drive a manual and I really hope uh, you know you share photos of your automatics with me. Find me on Instagram, become mine here on YouTube as well. Bless you, bye. Like I mentioned in the video, I really want to do a time and resource intensive video on power focal photos. Maybe engagement on this video will give me the push.